This is smithy.tv. here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto with Melanie Shatsky and Brian Cassidy. Tell me a little bit about your film, The Patron Saints. What inspired the making of it? Um, well, The Patron Saints is a, um, it's a look at people who live in a nursing home. So people that are kind of on the edge of death. So it's a kind of unfiltered look at the residents of one particular nursing home. Um, what inspired it? Um, well, you know, we didn't set out to make a film about the elderly, but we happened upon this particular place while making a short film called The Delaware Project a few years ago. And uh, we shot a couple of scenes there, and it never worked out in the short. But a year after completing that project, you know, we were still thinking about this particular nursing home, and we felt that there was a real richness to the place and to the characters, and we felt that it deserved its own film. And so we went back and, and just started shooting. Right. And what more specifically about this nursing home in particular really stood out for you? Well, I mean, it, it really had a lot to do with the fact that we were already there and had um, had relationships with the people mm -hmm. that were there. So it was, in, in, in some sense, this could be any nursing home. And we've wanted to kind of keep it that way, which is why we don't locate it specifically and we don't go into too many of those kinds of, um, you know, it's not a documentary in the sense of, um, how would you say, like, uh, very political or very um, uh, information driven, it's more experiential. It's not yeah, that's right, that's the word I was looking for, right? It's, it's more experiential. And so we were firmly embedded in this place and had developed these wonderful relationships and had this rapport, and so we just wanted to stay. Mm -hmm. And that staying turned into a period of about five years <clears throat> of going back and forth and, and just uh, sharing in these people's lives. Yeah. Wow. And how many hours of footage did you accumulate over this time frame? Surprisingly, not that much. I think it was about 65 to 70 hours. A lot of the work was just talking to people and getting to know them. So from the point of view of the nursing home, um, the reason that we, we, we got access, it wasn't because they were super excited about having a film made there. It was more because when we were there, the residents were being, being paid attention to. So a lot of it was just talking to people, getting to know them, you know, and, and just like building a rapport. Right. When I watched the film, I noticed that a lot of the residents almost sometimes felt, seemed unaware of the camera. How did you create that and what was your directing process like? Yeah, uh, that's actually um, something that takes a considerable amount of time um, and trust building with people, where you're so part of the lives of the residents that you just become very, very normal. In, in their personal space, and they've they've let us into their lives in such a in such a way that um, they're not really concerned about. I mean, we could get quite close to people, and it seems as if they're not aware. They're quite aware of our presence because we, this, these relationships were developed over a long period of time. But as a I would say as a filmmaking strategy, we like that feeling of being very very close to people, but having it seem like. The camera is uh, some other kind of observational presence, Absolutely. almost like a spirit that moves through a room and, and observes people. So, uh, great. Yeah. And you both directed and shot and edited the film. How, when you were shooting on like location, how do you how do you work and decide who's shooting what, or is it mm -hmm. more of an organic process? How does that work? Well, actually, Brian shot most of it. Okay. I did in the beginning. Um, I did some, but. Uh, towards you know the middle and the end it was more Brian and so we're a married couple and we've been together for almost eight years now so it's a very intuitive process so we just we're, we're kind of attuned to the same thing so you know if I thought something really interesting was happening in the room I might just look over at him and like d direct with my eyes where he might want to look at mm -hmm. so it's a very intuitive thing that, that comes from knowing each other so well and when you spend as much time together as we do, 
uh, it's just a constant conversation about. I mean, it becomes it becomes such a focal point of our lives. Our you know, to telling these stories and creating. Great. And there are so many interesting characters in this film. How did spending time with these wonderful people affect your lives and maybe how you have seen how you see the world or how your perspective may have changed through making this film? Hmm. Well, it's interesting. For me, I, before I was a filmmaker, um, I, I used to work in group homes for developmentally disabled adults. And so I was coming from a place of being pretty familiar with um, institutional living, mm -hmm. um, people that need an extra hand. Uh, and, and so for me, it's, I, I, so, yeah, I, I it's hard to say exactly what I learned because I feel like I was coming from a place of recognizing that kind of relationship with people. Um, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. It's a tough question. Um, and I'm not sure how to answer it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think maybe the thing that I come away with is that everybody needs a little bit of attention. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that. At the nursing home, those that have families and people that come visit them are so much better off. But there are a lot of people that, you know, their families live halfway across the country or even if they live in the same town, they don't come visit that often. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a real sadness to people who, who don't have those connections. So the thing that I'm left with is, yeah, that, that you know, having those types of bonds are really important and that, you know, something that should be nurtured and maintained. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And do you think that you will be making another film along the same lines in the future? I mean, I don't think we'll be making any more films uh, for a while on nursing homes or necessarily this part of the population. I feel like we've, I feel, I feel really pleased that I, that I think we've articulated what it was we were interested in with this film. Um, Tonally, emotionally, certainly that, that runs through our work. Um, we have a fiction film also called Francine. And uh, while the films are very different, there's, there's something, uh, a, a, a tone, an emotional quality that, that, that is the same in both of those films, I think, will continue that way. And how does it feel to have the film being released on Friday? Yeah, it that's feels great. great. It's great. You're excited. Yeah, awesome. no, it's, it's yeah. a tremendous honor. The Royal, uh, it's a great theater, and, uh, and um, we're very excited to be. Great. And where is the best place to find out more information on the both of you and on the film online? Um, well, <clears throat> you could learn more about our work at pigeonprojects.com. Perfect. And that's projects with an S at the end. Or we also have a website for the film specifically called thepatronsaintsfilm.com. Thank you so much. Congratulations and best of luck with the film. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats here at Smitty TV in downtown Toronto.